this is going to be one of the most important videos that you and I sit down and talk about. Today was a really big day, but not in the way that some of you guys might think. So today we're going to go and talk about how we plan on tackling this upcoming bull run and what you need to do if you want to exponentially grow your net wealth in this bull run and preserve that net wealth as well. Because at the end of the day, it's not about how much money you make, but it's about how much money you keep in the market inevitably ends up coming crashing back down. And guys, I've been here for a long time. I've been in the space for 12 years and I've been obsessively, passionately involved, not just like, I'm not just a tourist, right? That comes by and like, it's here in the bull runs and then I go do something. No, no, I, I like, I love this idea of decentralization and I love uh, figuring out how to, to bring that to the masses, right? And I think that we're at that point now where we're about to get that chat GPT moment, that, that moment where blockchain and crypto, that light bulb goes off, right? And there's a few reasons for that. One of them is account abstraction, which means removing the complexities of the blockchain away from the end user so that our non-coiner, non no-coiner friends can come and play and hang out as well. And then, of course, we have to have the use cases that are interesting to people, right? And then and the interesting use cases are like, why is it important to build a DAP, a decentralized application, right? Is it important to build, uh, you know, with, have a token? Why is it important to build peer-to-peer -peer networks? And, uh, and so some of us uh, have been working uh, you know, very, very hard to bring those, those things to the world. And, uh, and so today, we're going to talk about a few of those things. And uh, also, I th that's going to be toward the end. But it's also equally important for you guys to keep a steady head on your shoulder and not get shaken out because I know a lot of you guys are new to this industry and that's okay. Um, that's actually great. Welcome. If you are, my name is Kyle. What's up? <laughs> I've been in crypto for 12 years. Um, if you guys are excited for this video, if it's your first time here, like you get to be here on a special day. Um, yeah, I'm just going to jam with you guys and, and tell you guys a bit of a heart to heart here and uh, and but first, we're going to go over and, and talk about macro because I believe it's we haven't done a lot of that in the past week because it's just been choppy side to side and I haven't you know, really been trading much. Um, just really laying down, doubling down some high conviction plays and, uh, and putting a lot of effort into bringing you guys some really special things that we'll be rolling out uh, this month in April. So we'll talk about those. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Let's talk about Bitcoin price. Quickly, there's not to talk about. Like I said, it's been, it's been chopping sideways, and I'm sitting on the sideline mostly uh, in positions that I'm really happy with, and uh, and just gonna wait until this thing breaks up. And um, you know, will it go down lower? I, I don't know, guys. I don't know if anyone tells you that they know for sure, they're lying to you. Um, and uh, and so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but the good news is, guys, is that the things in the ETF world are looking positive, um, and we'll get into actually how that's expanding quite dramatically as well. But we had yesterday a net inflow of uh, $106 million, which is not bad at all. And, uh, and another good thing, too, is, guys, that this GPDC outflow, the thing that's been purging and hemorrhaging just Bitcoin onto the ecosystem, is slowing down a lot. So you see, like, two weeks ago, there's 6,000 Bitcoin out from GPDC. Uh, last week, 3.3,000, and this week, 2,000. So it's definitely slowing down, and I'll show you this. This picture says a thousand words right here. This is when the before the ETF is approved. You can see that uh, Grayscale was just holding this, uh, you know, six hundred twenty-two thousand Bitcoin, and then bam, the second it gets approved, selling off, selling off, selling off, and then like now they don't have so much left, guys. Like they're pretty much, you know, not out completely, but like they're either going to be completely out of the ETF game and completely. Like, I don't know what they're doing. Like lower your fees, be competitive, stop being idiots. Um, they must have some reason for this, but like, this is pathetic. Like you guys were at such a huge head start grayscale and now you're, uh, just literally scaring everyone off. So anyway, good news is like, they're almost done, uh, here and that's, that's good, but positive for us. Uh, we knew that there's a bunch of people buying stuff up all over the world. And, um, and so this is going to interesting, interesting thing too. And I, I was a bit, you know, like I've been trying to understand if, if what, how, what relevance, significant relevance the past you know, technical analysis has on this market we're coming into, considering the fact that we have the having coming up here very, very soon, and uh, we're also in the middle, we're also in a presidential election year, which is technically or historically very, very bullish for markets, and um, and it kind of fit my thesis here. So I'm looking here at these last three years or last three um, 
yeah, last three uh, years of this time period, April and May. And historically, the last three years, you've had these uh, you've had these pullbacks, and especially in May. So they say you know, sell in May and go away. Um, so are we going to add? Uh, is this going to be another case like that? Well, uh, then go. Crip asks, what about 2019 and 2020? <laughs> this little uh, monocle, like, huh? huh? And he goes, uh, hello, sir. Great question. For the sake of maximum effect, <laughs> I decided to exclude the data that does not fit the narrative. So he's trying to tell a narrative here, um, which is funny because this is technical analysis is, astro is astrology for men. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's like, uh, well, how do you feel today? I don't know what the stars tell you. I don't know. Um, but the point is that the, that the year before was a having year and it didn't fit the narrative of this year. So uh, I'm, I'm not so concerned, but the point is, is if we do get a dip, we do get a dip, guys. You get to go buy all your favorite altcoins uh, or Bitcoin at a, break, a very, very good discount. So remember, just because the price goes down doesn't mean that there's any uh, problem with that thing on a fundamental basis, right? So remember also too, guys, uh, there's so much manipulation out there, it is not even funny. And one of the things that I want to do here on this channel is make sure that you guys understand what the manip manipulation looks like, not just from big, not just from Wall Street, not just from the 1%, but from also... A lot of people within our industry as well, and I'll get into that in just a bit. Um, it's actually disturbing what's going on out there, but um, we'll, we'll dive into it a little bit. And then over the coming weeks, I'll peel back the layers of the onion for you a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, sort of exposing the ugly underbelly of the mass deception that's going on out there, smoke, smoke and mirrors and BS that, uh, you know, is, is meant to confuse you and, um, and, at the end of the day, leave you hanging. So I'm not here to do that. Um, but so Bitcoin RF says, Justin, big banks are reaching out to Bitcoin miners directly to buy Bitcoin because of the supply shortages on exchanges. And we can see that here, as you see that in a very long time, in years, actually, there's a little bit of Bitcoin on exchanges. Like, like it's just dropping down. Enough. And this is why people are, the big banks and stuff are going directly to miners to try to get this Bitcoin because it's literally... A supply squeeze right now like literally like, like literally like such a small amount let's move this slider over here you can see guys it's like it's not not a lot of bitcoin here left on exchanges um 1.74 million as opposed to like if we look back here you can see back here was like 1.9 but back here we had like two so that's just a very small amount of bitcoin left on exchanges um supply shock is a real thing and, uh, and yeah, with everyone like the ETFs, um, grabbing it all up, Mr. 100, eating it all up, Michael Saylor, eating it all up. Um, and then now, of course, we have other market participants. Like I said before, that the U.S. was kind of just the first domino. There was other countries that, before the U.S. that had spot ETFs, right? But they weren't extremely significant, right? They, I think <laughs> the U.S. eats up in one day what the other ETFs has done <clears throat> in their existence. So, but... You do have here, like, so it's $930 billion DWS partners with Galaxy Digital to launch a physical Bitcoin ETC in Germany. So Germany is joining the picture. We know Hong Kong slash China is entering the picture this year soon. You know, Brazil is doing it with BlackRock in, in Brazil. Um, and now we have uh, now we have this one in Germany. And then we also have this one in Australia. So the CBOE of Australia, um, along with Monochrome Asset Management, applied for spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, if approved, it'll be the first spot Bitcoin ETF to allow direct holdings of Bitcoin in Australia. Right on. Okay. So now we have in Australia. So it's like, a, and it's about to get really, really, really exciting here. So the same way that we kept broadcasting the uh, what, what James Safart and Jeff Balkunas from Bloomberg Intelligence would say, the Coin Tucky Derby. Now you have like, if that was the Coin Tucky Derby, and you had BlackRock, Fidelity, uh, Arca, you know, like, like all these guys, right? Uh, Galaxy, Invesco doing their ETFs. Now you have the banks, right? And so from what I understand, these banks, they're not allowed to solicit the ETF to their clients yet until they get approval. Um, that, which means that if their clients go to them and ask them for Bitcoin spot ETF, yes, they can sell it to them, but they cannot be actively on the phones, engaging and trying to sell this product to their customers yet. Um, but we're about to see the, the junior leagues of the Cointucky Derby or round two which is the banks and registered investment advisors who are about to step into the ring, start mad dash to sell everyone. And we're about to get a big, big uh, uptick, in my opinion, in the ETF um, net inflows, like massive. So remember what we've been saying, massive shortage of circulating Bitcoin out there and the markets to buy up. 
In fact, it's getting so, so immense that people have to go directly to miners to try to buy it. But even then, I'm guessing like, you know, miners don't have that much. Um, and then you have more countries entering the ETF race. And round two of the US is about to open up and start aggressively selling and marketing Bitcoin ETF to their clients. So, so Morgan Stanley wants to be the first US bank to fully approve Bitcoin ETF for their advisors to proactively offer it to any client. They are in a race with UBS to approve both going through compliance process now. The first major brokerage to approve will likely lead to all doing the same. And, uh, and so this is where I said, watch what they do, not, not what they say. So you can see that the CIO of Goldman Sachs, uh, this liar here, says that <laughs> its clients are not interested in crypto. Uh-huh. Shaman, uh, known for her blunt uh, options of Bitcoin skepticism, also, the banks uh, do not consider crypto as an investment asset class. Uh huh. <laughs> and then right away you go, just in, breaking news. BlackRock has added Goldman Sachs, Citadel, and Citigroup as authorized participants in its iBits Bitcoin ETF. Wall Street is arriving. Uh huh. All right, Goldman Sachs, liar. It's lie. You lie, this person. You liar. Not nice. Tell, tell them to you know, to try to dump the price right before you get your access to it, huh? Okay, so, again, guys, we watch, we look. I think the blockchain is transparent. We get to see what's going on. So, we know that we're in a bull market when the tether printer is just... Brrrr. You can see that in the last three days, there was $3 billion of tether minted at the tether minting press. And uh, that is capital coming into the markets. <clears throat> from other asset classes and coming into the market to buy up our Bitcoin and our altcoins. They're coming to buy your Bitcoin. Do not sell it to them. Hoddle that shit. Um, but this is a sign of bullish momentum here. So, so far, <clears throat> everything we've talked about should be reminding you guys of the fundamentals of where we are right now. So it's okay if we have like a nice little healthy correction, this si sideways movement consolidation, like... <clears throat> it's actually a good thing. Again, guys, if you are trading with leverage, be careful out there as uh, there could be wild swings either way right now. We just don't know what's going on. Again, I, I enjoy trading with leverage uh, for fun. Again, it's, 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 it's another form of dopamine along with the shitcoin meme casino. But, um, but uh, you know, this is, it's not fun in a volatile market. It's not fun to see your portfolio, your, your, even those, gam those, those ones go down. So just wait for like a, let's just wait for a clear, Directional path, momentum, and then let's 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 just long in an upward momentum rally. Um, so this is what I've been saying for a while now. Uh, so simply, Bitcoin says if the upcoming having of on four twenty isn't poetic enough, which it is, uh, it's also a palindrome date, which means that it's exactly the same forward as it is backwards. Four two zero two zero two four is the same as four two zero two zero two four. 42024 and for backwards 42024. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Bitcoin for you. And Satoshi. Poetic. Good old Satoshi. Guys, so um, if you're looking for an opportunity here to get involved, uh, we are actually looking for your help. Now, uh, what we're looking for, guys, is, is, is what is called a conceptualizer, right? I, I guess. I mean, that's what I'm told. So it's somebody who can help us with thumbnail, title, and the overall concept of the show. Right now, I've got a, a team of some researchers, a few of them, and, uh, and they're researchers, right? And so it takes up a lot of time to work with our, our thumbnail guys and then the researchers trying to, and that's not what they should be doing, right? They should be researching the best alpha for us and someone who's a creative, very smart creative, understands YouTube, understands titles, understands you know, uh, thumbnails, um, and ideally can create them as well, uh, we're looking for you, uh, for you. So if you are interested in that role, please, you must be experienced. You must be skilled. Um, I don't want to have to coach anybody like, uh, but if that is you and you're looking for an awesome way to get into crypto, um, reach out to media at mvglobal.io, media at mvglobal io or also it works at media at masterventures.com and uh and yeah this just let us um send in like a just a 
a brief little cover letter or something, maybe your CV, some examples of some maybe art or thumbnails you've done in the past and, uh, and why you would be a good fit for the role. Um, would, would like to, uh, to bring on some new talent as quickly as possible, guys. So uh, if you are, send us an email and we'll take a look. So now we're going to get into this debate of, of um, like, I don't know if it's a debate, but like this kind of whole Solana versus base thing right now. And we'll talk about that for a second. Um, so this lol DeFi person says, basically, basically, I'm going to read the whole thing. Basically, he's got a group for normies, not, no coiners, right? To see what they're, or not no coiners, but like normies and noobs into the crypto space. And he has it mostly just to see what they're up to and help them. It's like, you know, friends, family kind of stuff. And the takeaway is like, they don't even know, like they, they basically love this like short-term dopamine hit. Um, they're, they're basically not willing to come off of Solana. Uh, and because like if it is a new launch on another chain, like they're just not going to bridge over there. And, um, and they basically, they bought their soul. They used to buy all these other tokens, uh, either on Coinbase or crypto.com. So these like onboarding ramps and, um, and there's just like zero interest in NFTs. So basically it's just like this real, they love this dopamine hit, right? And so Solana has really solidified its way itself kind of as, as this cheap, fast network that uh, has like a cult-like following. And, um, and these numbers demonstrate, you know, this amazing growth it's had. Now, I was very vocal about what I thought about Solana last time when it was coming down, when it was going down all the time. And this past year, I've been quite bullish on Solana as it seemed to have fit, like figured out all of the problems and delivering on its promise of ch it's very hyperscalable and cheap and fast. However, this is what we're seeing over the past few days here. The red is failed transactions and the green is successful transactions. I guess I haven't been at, like, I haven't been experienced in this past, uh, for the, since like, like before the past few days, but the past few days I, I definitely have. And today basically impossible for me to send Solana from myself, one of my wallets, my other wallet. I've tried several wallets. I tried to deposit Solana in a, in a, a protocol I'll talk to you in about in a second here. And I've just been getting failed transaction, failed transaction, failed transaction. This is my my tweet from a few hours ago, you can see I just was trying to try out this protocol I'm about to talk to you guys about, and uh, and so it, it it cannot, so I cannot, uh, and it's a shame. Um, it's a shame, but uh, they they will hopefully fix it. And if not, I've talked to you guys about Fire Dancer before. Uh, we talked about this several months ago, where uh, Jump Crypto, which is a big big firm, um, is has been working on a protocol called Fire Dancer, which should. Uh, increase the throughput of Solana to 1 million transactions per second, they say. Of course, this has only been done on a test net. Of course, not real life action. And one of the things I can say is that, you know, I was optimistic and bullish on Solana and I, I, I still am. I, I think that they, they have like probably the best, most loyal community of, of any infrastructure out there, um, which is amazing. Like that is, to build that in the first place is, is huge. Community is super important um, because they will keep they, that. That's the Solana community, Soul Soldiers or whatever you called. Like that's who kept Solana alive in the in the bad times through the bear market through the FTX drama. Um, was you was you guys the community and uh, and I think a lot of people are forgetting how important that is. It is critical, right, to be able to build that loyal community. It's so critical, and they did a great job in the early days of doing that. So, um, so we'll see what happens there. But uh, you can see base here as we've been talking about for a while now has just been exploding with metrics here, uh, just absolutely exploding. And for good reason too. Base, you know, the Ethereum layer two by Coinbase, um, is going to be launching. Uh, so first of all, we, we know that they have like 100 million users or, or something like that, right? And, and they're gonna have another 100 million come in probably this next bull market. And what they're gonna be using Coinbase and they're gonna want a simple, easy on-ramp. And so now you have essentially, in a matter of just weeks from now, they'll be launching their smart wallet, which is going to be something that uh, essentially removes all the complexities. It's an account abstraction based wallet that will allow easy on-ramp from Coinbase into and be able to use any dApp. And you have also, sorry, if you go to Coinbase wallet, uh, the, the X account and watch this video here, it's like a 15 minute overview of the smart wallet, super cool. And then for, for developers like us who are building cool, cool projects, we can integrate that Coinbase wallet SDK directly into our dApp and white label it. So it looks like, for example, a Commonwealth or a paid network wallet. 
um, and people can onboard directly in, participate in our DAP without having to you know, get gas first or whatever. We can even subsidize the gas cost for the end user to make it super simple where they can just come in with an on-ramp through their bank or with a credit card and participate in our ecosystem uh, without having to, to first you know, worry about buying on exchanges and transferring to your wallet and blah, 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 uh, gas fees and all this kind of complicated stuff. This is like setting up a wallet in like 10 seconds, um, self-custody, account recovery, things like that. So this is a big, big, big step in user-friendliness, user experience and adoption. And so uh, we're really, really happy for that, especially since I'll tell you about an announcement that we made uh, today, if you guys aren't aware of it. But what I want to do right here is, is I'll show you that. So this, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know about Commonwealth. You, you guys probably participated in maybe in the free fund. Uh, so one of the projects over there was called Mangata, which recently rebranded to Gasp. And, uh, you know, I, I'll tell you guys that I, I've been working um, a lot on, we have been, the entire MV Global team uh, over the past few years on building out our deal flow pipeline network. You know, that's really important, right? To be able to get access to the best other the funds, the hackathons, the best developers. Um, and so you can see this recent uh, announcement from previous Mangata, now Gasp, one of the coolest projects out there um, that you have on the cap table here, one from Polychain, which is one of the most well-respected funds in the space, us, CMS Holdings. So really good product, uh, deals that we're getting into with these amazing other funds, tier ones, and um, and the goal is to be able to bring that to you guys, right? At the end of the day, that if you if you know what I'm doing, like you know that the products that we're building are meant to bring the access to you guys, where this is historically impossible for anyone watching this pretty much to actually get into these kind of deals. But um, but that's what our goal is, right? And so I have been working my ass off to bring to you guys the full suite of fundraising and access, to open up democratizing access to the 99% to the main street, or as we call it on Commonwealth, all street. And today there was an AMA uh, on uh, uh, from Commonwealth talking about the updates. Uh, I suggest that you go watch that. Uh, da -da -da -da, where is it here? All street AMA. Um, and uh, and it's, it's quite, it gives you the updates, but the, but the biggest takeaway was that, uh, so Commonwealth will be um, launching on base protocol. If you guys, if uh, that's not clear already, uh, we, we're going to use ZK Sync, but we feel at the t at the moment right now, um, it just makes a lot more sense, especially being geared for mainstream adoption, right? Commonwealth is set up like to, to bring the masses, the same opportunities that we as VCs get right now, we as KOLs get right now, but you as retail do not get. There's something incredibly powerful with the power of, of a hive or a community. And I'll tell you what right now, like, like since my channel has been, has gotten fairly big, thank you guys for that, by the way. Um, it's pretty insane the kind of opportunities that KOLs get, uh, you know, to come on board. Like I've been offered opportunities to come on into projects like, you know, like weeks before the, the, the token starts trading and I get like the same deal or better than the guys who invested, the VCs, like tier one funds that invested like three years ago and I've got better vesting terms and this kind of stuff. And it's because attention is so difficult to capture in this space that uh, people are willing to pay a lot, a lot of money for it. I, uh, I've seen a lot of other uh, projects that, that pay a big percentage of token supply just for guerrilla marketing, right? And that's like, that's, that's, these are all kind of little games. Like, you know, it's crazy when I see a, a new project pop up on some launch pad that, you know, I've never heard of before. And I'm, I'm like deeply integrated in the space every day, right? We've got research and we're looking at the crypto Twitter timeline. I'm using tools like, like, uh, like Kaito AI to try to find like trending things. And like, why is it that I've never heard of this project and it has 500,000 followers already? Right? Like, what is that? Right? <laughs> like, that's not organic at all. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we, so, So that, that, that's the, the goal, right, with Commonwealth. And the other announcement that was made today was, of course, that they will be doing an entire public sale on Ignition paid. This is a big deal. Um, it's a big deal because it's $9 million, right? And, you know, one of the things that I wanted to do was um, we need to get, I believe strongly that the community is one of the most important things in this space. And for some reason, 
the trend has been going away from, well, probably because people are scared of regulatory stuff or whatever, but like the trend has been going away from offering retail, you guys, an opportunity to get into the project before it starts trading on the market. And people only want you guys to be involved after their bags have pumped 50X so that you can be their exit liquidity, right? And, uh, and that sucks. And that sucks. Um, you know, like one of the things that I, I realized is that when I, when I meet somebody who's been in the space for a while, let's say they were around in 2017, and they participated in a great ICO like uh, like Thorchain or like Elrond or you know, Multiverse X or whatever. Like, and if you meet them somewhere and they and you start talking for some reason, you bring up like Thorchain or whatever, they'll stop you in the mid in mid sentence and be like, "Yeah, I was in the ICO," you know. And that's a moment of pride, and it should be like you you know you got to you came and believed in a project and you invested it, and like if you still held your bag from that time, it'd be worth a fortune right now. Like no matter what you invested in, things did crazy returns, and. I remember those days very clearly and, uh, and yeah, there was a lot of scams and shitty things that happened. So what, what I wanted to do was be able to bring that same experience of the early stage access, primary market, primary market means essentially private or not trading on the open market yet. Right. And so, uh, so Commonwealth is focused more on the fun style, the earlier stage and then paid network. Our launchpad is focused on uh, later stage, you know, either late, private round or public sale. Now, the entire bear market was focused on reimagining the architecture and the token economy for, for paid network. Um, we learned, I've learned, and, and the team and everything, we, we've learned so much from our experiences last bull run, and I, I felt there was a lot of problems with the way that things were done. And um, I wanted to figure out how to lower the barrier of entry or completely reduce it and open up to more participants, um, you know, the, again, the, if we can get several thousand people or 10,000 people involved in the, in the public sale, then that means you've got 10,000 people who are community members and will be, uh, will, will appreciate that. So at paid network, our goal is to not do five or six launches a week like we did before, but more like two, three, four launches every month where we can be super selective bring you tier one deals that people like Polychain or Coinbase Ventures or A16Z or whatever have invested into. So those type of quality deals at fair valuations where you can expect probably not the crazy 50 or 100 Xs that you see at other places, but I'll tell you that those are manipulated, right? So when you have a really, really low circulating supply initially, it's easy to manipulate the price because there's no token circulating, right? But the thing is that that's never maintained. And the fact is, is that here's a shocker for you guys, that most people don't get to participate in these public IDOs unless you are rich, unless you've got huge amounts of their the native token. Can you commit that capital for in staking, pl staking pools for a long period of time? And only then do you get some allocation, but even then it's not a lot. And then only then is this fake marketed 100X or something like that, that's only peaks at all-time high and then it drops back down and then by the time you get the rest of your tokens, it's much less than that. So what I prefer to see is a healthier type of chart where maybe on the launch it does like a two or three or four X, right? But like it's just kind of stable there. And then it gives, P it gives the, the team time to deliver on their roadmap and milestones. And a big difference between 2017 and, and where we are today is that most projects we talk, we're, talk, we're talking to, by the time that they do their public sale and the token starts trading, they already have a product you can use it for, right? Like Commonwealth, the day the token is on the market, you will need to use it to benefit greatly from, the, from, from using Commonwealth. Like it's, it's just it's how it should be, right? We're coming to market with a product. Not in 2017 where most people raised a shit ton of money, $50 million, whatever, and just never built anything. Um, Commonwealth is built ready to go, uh, and most majority of it. So, uh, so Commonwealth will have the first, f the first normal fund, uh, launching in a, in, a, in a, I don't know, two, three weeks. And, uh, and you will see that it's an insane amount of VCs that sit on the, the oracles that will be bringing the deals to Commonwealth, you know, from like Animoca, from Hashkey, from Cypher Capital, from Master Venture, from Metavest, like, it's insane the kind of deal flow that this network gets, guys, and they're bringing it to you. Um, and so 
it's also a really respectable FTV that Commonwealth is doing, and it's a nine million dollar raise. So it should be able to get get you guys meaningful uh, amounts of, in, into it at the public sale, and it should be able to be distributed by to a lot of people. Um, a lot of people are questioning whether we can fill a nine million dollar raise, but I absolutely believe that the demand is there. It's just the people haven't been given the opportunity to do it. You know, like, uh, and I, I definitely think the the, the demand is there. Um, we will find out, but uh, but yeah. So I, I I'm excited for that. And that, what that means is that I, I'm, I'll go into more depth on the way the economy works and play. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll actually do some like examples of how the uh, different scenarios of of the different the, the raise amounts, how that will impact the economic model of paid network. And then also keep in mind the same architect, this guy, <laughs> essentially designed the token econ around both paid network and Commonwealth. And that's something I take extreme pride on. And I think it's actually absolutely necessary for what we started talking about at the beginning of this is like, where are we going as an industry? And what is it going to take for people to realize that light bulb to come off to say, ah, oh, this is what a token economy should be like. This is why we should have a token. Oh, this is why it's so valuable. Oh, this is why. And then a lot of light bulbs should start going off with the products that we're building. Uh, I firmly believe that what we have is superior to, to pretty much everything else. Uh, from the way that it's been architected, the way that it's been the economic design, the way that the deal flow comes. You know, I can't say it's better than everything on everybody, but when it comes across the board, uh, I think that as a, as, a, as a whole, we've taken the best of the best and put that together in one piece, both for paid network and for Commonwealth. And there's both future plans to evolve these things into even bigger things in the future. But, uh, but yeah, like, like just... Like just to give you an example, if you if you scroll down on on paid, uh, and you guys strongly recommend that you guys, if you're not already following the paid network in both in Commonwealth, so paid network is paid underscore network, and uh, Commonwealth is uh, at join com on wealth in the ticker W L T H Commonwealth, and uh, so just to give you an example, so <clears throat> we have we announced Commonwealth today, and. Uh, and then we also have Omoja coming up too, right? Omoja is sick. Right? You get the cap table from like Coinbase Ventures, 500 Startups, Y Combinator, um, or the Orange Dow, which comes with all Y Combinator alumni. Um, and so you can see we also have Metropolis over here from Outlier Ventures, amazing uh, startup studio as well. And um, so these are all high quality things that we've invested into, right? Us personally. So we put our money where our mouth is and then uh, bring those to you guys or maybe they participated in uh, with Commonwealth as well. But... Um, but yeah, like Umoja, yeah, it, it, I can't even tell you guys, uh, all the plans that they have because some of it's confidential, but you will find out before, uh, the raise, I believe, but <clears throat> the products that they have, it, it, everything's very interesting and unique, right? It's not like it's just another me too thing on some other chain. Umoja is unique. Metropolis is unique and Commonwealth is first of first in kind, the only thing in the space in the world. Actually, Commonwealth is the only thing in the world like it there's nothing else not even close not even close so yeah commonwealth is, is launching their public sale at a 60 million dollar ftv uh which is i think extremely reasonable um considering the tech is already built the uniqueness of it the demand that it'll have the revenue that it'll generate like it's going to be it's perfect for for right where it is right now it is the best place that you can come to. And I guess one of the things I want to talk to you guys about too is these two tools, Commonwealth and Pay Network. If you use them predominantly for this bull market, you are going to be in a very good place by the way that they're structured. We put a lot of effort into making sure that there's as much user protection as possible, as, risk, as much risk minimization as possible, staying as true to the ethos of decentralization and peer-to-peer -peer as possible. Um, and that will all come clear in our marketing and literature over the coming days, weeks, and months. But um, it's just a, a day that fuck, I, I've been working a long time to make these things what they are today, guys. We launched Paid Network in January 2021, and we've been working on Commonwealth for like two and a half years. And um, and the day's almost arriving here to 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 kick things off. So I'm just really excited. Like, this is something that uh, I can genuinely tell you that. I would put everything into these things to, to make them uh, come. And it's not just me. The, the teams right, are incredible here. And uh, everyone has put blood, sweat, and tears into these products to make sure that you guys can feel included. And 
that was one of the best things for me was, uh, you know, in my early days, like 2015, 16, I was able to invest in things like Coinbase, Kraken, Ripple, uh, Abra, Circle, you know, USDC, Bitfinex, USDT. Like I got equity and stake in all of these companies because there's a platform like Commonwealth and Paid that existed back in the day that was, but it was for accredited investors only. And so what we've been able to do through decentralized technology, dec legal decentralization as a, as a type of legal framework is bring that same opportunity that I got that made me feel so special to be able to invest in these amazing companies that are all now giants and behemoths today. Bringing that to you guys for the first time ever in history, ever. Like I said, there's nothing else out there like this. So, uh, yeah, guys, um, let me know in the comments if you're excited for this because I am <laughs> very excited. Um, and then, so a couple more things before we end it for the weekend. But this popped up on my radar today, OR. Now, it's kind of confusing because like, there's not a lot of information about it except for OR is digital currency you can mine from anywhere at home or on your phone. Okay, it's another digital currency, like what? But it's on Solana, right? And so, so I started looking into it, I'm like, what is this thing? It's basically, it basically is, it follows the same hash rhythm, like a hashing logic. It's, a, it's basically proof of work on Solana. So, and I'm like, what the fuck? Why would they do this? It makes sense. Like, what, what is going on? And then I started thinking about it because it literally tells you nothing other than that, right? Um, and, and you can see, so, so I did, um, I wanted to mine it, but I, you can't mine it. Uh, well, not right now because Solana network is basically down. Um, and you can see I, I, buy, I, buy, I did buy here uh, just a little bit, like a, not, not a huge amount, but I, I wanted some exposure. And, and surprisingly, that, that sale did go through. Um, I, I tried sending Solana from one wallet to the next, and, uh, and it, it didn't work. But um, like many, 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 many times, I also tried to mine this. And so what you do is you go over here to or.supply for slash home, and then you can just, you know, you come to this thing and you hit here, start, get started, and then you go here, click here to start mining. And then you have to send uh, like a net, network fee or something like that for gas. It's not much, say like 0.17 sol or something like that. And, um, and then you can start mining for your, for your computer, and then you start earning these or tokens. Now, the logic to me was that the rules of the emission is the same as Bitcoin essentially, but on an accelerated time scale. So every minute, uh, a new ore is produced and multiple people can solve the puzzle essentially meaning multiple winners can miners can win the same block reward like bitcoin reward um but uh but it still gets shared so one ore every minute and then if 30 people win then they can get the right get the right puzzle solved rather than 30 people share that uh distribution now i started thinking like, what, what the hell why, why is this well if, it, if it's a familiar extremely familiar type of rule to Bitcoin, where we understand having, we understand the scarcity of it, we understand this kind of stuff, then people will get this ore. They'll understand that. And, uh, but, but what's the difference between this and Bitcoin? Well, this is cheap and fast. And so maybe ore becomes a peer-to-peer -peer digital currency because we understand the rules of the algorithm, right? And we know that right now, it's only sitting at an $8 million, $7.5 million fully diluted market cap. And you can see it's actually gone down a little bit since I bought it. Um, and, and it might still do that because people, people are, are just going to be, um, people will just be essentially like, uh, like farming this thing, right? They're just going to be sit there and just buy, sell, just in, in passive revenue. You just, just sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it, mine it, sell it, mine it, sell it, make money. For me, I'd rather just try to mine it. You know, I, I don't know how, how fast this thing might explode. It's already 15, 17,000 wallets in four days. I think this is this is what's clogging congest congesting the Solana network right now. I think this thing alone. Um, so yeah, I'd rather just mine it early on and uh, and sit on it. And if it turns into, you know, the next peer to peer digital cash, uh, you know, hundred billion dollar market cap or whatever, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred billion, then like, there you go. There's there's a hundred X from there. Like like, but even even you know potentially even more if this, if Solana becomes like a real solidified like the alternative to ETH. Um, like, like, and then you have essentially some type of rule system that we understand through Bitcoin, then it could be, it could be, who knows? It's worth a punt, that's for sure. Um, and then last thing I'll talk to you guys about, <laughs> about the, the Tooker, because I just, just make, he's making me laugh. And it looks like you're getting a nice little sell-off opportunity right here. Um, it's obviously much 
higher than when we talked about it the first time over here, which is here. I like see my buy orders here, no sales, um, and I'm not going to sell right now. I, like, when I when I find something like this, guys, I, I'm just it, like I can afford to lose all this, right? And so for me, and, and and if you might be in a different situation, and then if you are, that's totally fine. Like when the two X's take out your initial and just ride the rest, right? Ride it right to Valhalla. But for me, I put into these kind of like, these kind of punts, like what I am willing to lose. And I, I, I play this kind of game with myself. I say, I say, well, if this thing ends up doing like 100x, you know, 200x, like it's going to put me in like a significantly different place in my life. Like, well, me, like not really, but like it'll still be like a huge amount of ammunition I can use to do other things. Um, 100x for anybody does that kind of stuff. So, and so I'm going to just let this ride because I appreciate the humor. It, it relates to everyone in the mainstream guys watch my video from two days ago like you'll see i played some of the videos uh, and uh it's hilarious and like keeping up with current events um producing like co good content it's a great meme it's got comedic value it's got you know um so i really appreciate what the team is doing here and like uh I, I don't have um any type of deal with them at this time i just uh i just appreciate what, they're, what they've been doing I, I i might reach out and ask them <laughs> for a deal or something but as of right now nothing um so uh so yeah, anyway, guys, like, I, it's, um, I, I do like to find like small independent people that like developers. If you guys have been watching my channel for a long time, you know that like Web3 Wallet and White Ethereum, these things that didn't really work out. Like if I find some or, or zero X leverage, which has been popping off recently, like yesterday was a 55% pump or something like that. Um, I like to support, like they don't always work out. And, uh, but that's the thing, like the earlier and smaller the project is, of course, the more risky it becomes. Um, but the more upside potential you can have too. You know, those are the rocket ships that are just going to go take you to the moon. Um, yeah. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap it up at 6:30 in the morning on Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed soon. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, and yeah, we, we will we will continue to peel back those layers of the onion uh, in the coming weeks as we move ahead. And but most importantly, I just I hope that uh, what we're building speaks for itself. I know that it will speak for itself because. Um, because it's it's just way too powerful. This, this is the beauty of decentralization and build, and doing it right. Like, like you haven't really seen a system that operates like this. I think. And uh, I mean, GMX is a good example of, of something that keeps like the the centralized the developers kept keep no profit. Right? This is 100% injected back in the ecosystem. Brilliant platform. That's why it's so good. Um, and uh, and you, you just don't see a lot of other things like that. Right? And it's just because either people are greedy or people don't care or people don't understand it. Mostly just people don't understand it. Um, and so maybe we'll, we'll get into like a deeper token economic discussion. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments below. But you'll also learn along as we break it down. I know that we're working on some, some cool videos, some explainer videos, some, uh, some flywheel uh, charts and things like that to look at to see like what makes these models so special versus the existing models uh, out there today. With that being said, guys, I'll catch you later. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.